الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله يا أهل التوحيد والإيمان may Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless us with ikhlas with the bad Allah sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins and our many shortcomings and help us to go forward and be better practicers of his deen tabarak wa ta'ala a question was asked sahabat of Allah with regards to having in-laws and family <coughs> that are on shirk, kufr and all kind of bid'ah and deviation and in fact when we look at that scenario you know, and how to deal with them, especially if they're causing harm to your religion. We see that it's a similar situation to the way, to the scenario of those who re are reverts. And that the revert, perhaps in his or her household, that he lives with other than Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Christians, Jews, from amongst his relatives, his elders, his, his or her family. And at times that can cause discord and disunity in the home. And at times they can be even harmful to one's religion. For example, those sisters that have reverted to Islam, especially the young ones who are very dependent upon their families. And then they try to wear hijab and they try to wear full hijab. Some of them wear niqab. And they find that their family uh, is even threatening to them, maybe even threatening violence, exhibiting hatred, believing that they are to be, they are considering them extremists, on and on, etc. And so, in those scenarios, those are very difficult scenarios, and there is not one shoe that fits all sizes, so to speak, in that depending on the person's particular situation it requires hikmah and it requires husnu mu'amalat and how they deal with their their elders and their parents and so on and their loved ones that they should try to treat them with respect and kindness to the extent of their ability fear Allah as much as you're able to do at the same time there may come a time when they have to leave that household and find a means in order to practice their deen. And this is similar to the scenario of those who also come from a family who have elders that are on shirk and kufr and perhaps doing witchcraft and sihr upon them and causing harm to their family that in those types of scenarios it's important to do your best to be respectful do your best to be kind but there may come a time where it necessitates that you may have to separate ties or at least distance yourself if it becomes a situation in which they are directly harming you. For example, doing sihr or witchcraft on you. They are physically beating you and, 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 and causing harm to your family and your children. That in those types of scenarios, you may at, a, at least have to distance yourself and minimize your contact with them. So it shows us the importance of habit of not only the hijrah, from disbelief to Iman or the places of disbelief to the places of Iman but also even on a micro level the importance of being in an environment in which you can practice your religion in safety it also illustrates for Sahabat of Allah that we need independence we need as a community to be able to take care of one another and we need to have the structures in our communities to be able to assist those who are going through the struggle in embracing Islam or that they have these types of needs. And that we need support systems for them. A third point, Ahabat Fillah, I want to encourage myself and, and the others and especially the youth to find direction, to find a means to be able to make a livelihood to have independence, 
get educated, give yourself options by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.